All right, number 69 is a tough problem right here, but I think I know where we're going with this one. So we've got a monomial, e to the t up in the numerator, and then a trinomial, e to the 2t plus 2e to the t plus 1 down in the denominator. I don't know if you guys noticed what I noticed right here, but this expression down on the bottom is what we would call, it's really a quadratic expression here, guys, but with, uh, with e as the base. So I had a sense where we were going here, and I believe this is correct. We're going to let u equal e to the t power right there. So the primary substitution takes place in the numerator. Let's see where we are right now. So this is going to be the integral of the whole numerator just becomes a u. And then in the denominator, some interesting stuff happens here. Um, if we take a look at where we're at with that one, I guess I should stop right now and say, okay, that du is going to equal here, guys. Uh, and then we've got, let's see, that e to the t right here. That doesn't change at all. And then a dt. I actually just realized a mistake that I made right there. Get rid of that. And here goes. The secondary substitution is the e to the t dt that we have right there. So everything I just circled right there, e to the t dt, is going to get replaced by a du. Okay? Now, what have I accomplished, though? Down in the bottom, we've got e to the 2t power, which, if you'll notice, is this thing right here squared, guys. If I were to square both sides of this, that would be e to the t. Sorry, that's pretty crammed squared. And that's an e to the 2t power right there. So that first term right there, e to the 2t, is going to become a u squared. And then plus 2 e to the t is just what u is. That's a 2u and then a plus 1. Now again, that whole numerator, e to the t, and then multiplied by dt just became du. There's just a 1 up there in that numerator right there. Okay, And that's interesting. Now what I noticed right there, and I don't think this was a coincidence, that denominator is now a perfect square trinomial. So this becomes the integral of 1 over, and we've got a u plus 1 quantity squared. Yeah, this problem is actually easier than I thought it was because I had goofed up that numerator right there. Okay, all of that. And that means, guys, that because that numerator is just a constant right here, we could rewrite this as the integral of u plus 1 to the negative second power taken with respect to you. And I think we can do this problem pretty simply from this point just by reversing the power rule. And the reason why? Because the derivative within is constant. If that was like a u cubed plus 1, this problem would be much, much tougher, if not impossible. So where are we right now, guys? Let's keep our base the same, u plus 1. Let's raise the exponent by 1 because we're anti-differentiating to negative 1. Let's divide by that new exponent. That puts a negative out in front. And we would also divide by the derivative within, but that's just 1 as well. So that's our antiderivative. Let's stick a plus c at the end of all that, and then let's unsubstitute or resubstitute. And I believe we just had u equaling e to the t power right there. Yeah, u is equal to e to the t. So let's do that, guys. We've got the opposite now of u was e to the t plus 1 to the negative first power plus c. Now that answer would get full credit in my book. It wouldn't shock me if they maybe wrote it a different way and made it a fraction now negative 1 over and then an e to the t plus 1. Take that negative first power, move it down to the bottom of your fraction there, and a plus c at the end. So I think either one of those answers there looks pretty darn good. And yeah, you'd get full credit for either one of those. Okay, so that is problem number 69.